This video is brought to you by Squarespace. All right, welcome back everyone. It is time once again to check out some awesome photographs submitted by viewers like you. Let's get to the mail. Okay, so first up is this book from Ole Christensen, who comes to us from Copenhagen, and it's called Look. This is incredible. So first of all, this book is all black and white, and these images are very high contrast, and there are so many things that I love about this. So the first thing that I want you to notice here is on each one of these spreads, nothing that we see here is exactly what we would say full bleed. In other words, there are borders on every image, and sometimes there is a lot of space. And I want you to notice as we go through here the proportion of the images as they face one another. The other thing that's going to be obvious too is that Ole has a uh, very specific vocabulary of geometry that he's using throughout this book that each one of these images has something to do with the next and also as you turn the pages that theme kind of continues through. This is very well done. It reminds me of Ralph Gibson's book style in a lot of ways and a lot of times people will refer to this as stream of conscious but it has everything to do with composition. It has everything to do with how each photograph relates to one another and I think this is just so so well done. One of my very favorite parts in this book is a section where he starts playing with this idea of the diagonal. We see it first with the bicycle on the street with the light shining through. The next is actually a line painted on the street. This is a really simple composition. This idea is then carried on to the next section where we have the introduction of the triangle and we start to see more 45 degree angles but they start to work in geometrical shapes. Another thing that I really like is the idea of using gesture and figure. So a lot of times you'll see people in these photographs but because they're so high contrast you see something peeking out from a shadow, and so you identify it as human gesture and how that relates across these various spreads. This is just so well done. And this is something that I wanted to point out with you guys because there's a lot to bookmaking, and I think that it works best when you have somebody who artistically thinks of the book as an art form, and this is really well done, and I've, I've had so much fun looking at this, and I'm really glad to kick this video off with this. So anyway, I will link up to Ole's book in the show description below if you are interested in getting a copy. This one is well worth it. Excellent job, Ole. You should be very proud. This is awesome. All right, so next up is this little book that comes to us from Rafael Medina. It's called Dear PVD, and he has a note, and actually, I'll share these with you too. Just some single photos that are really nicely done. Love the color on these. Rafael also included a note which reads, Hey Ted, my name is Rafael Medina, and I am a photographer from Providence, Rhode Island. I released my first photo book back in December 2021, and I've been wanting to send you a copy ever since. I'm pretty good at procrastinating, so it took me a while. I understand I'm the same way. I discovered your page back in 2020 during the early stages of the pandemic and your artist series was a huge help to me when I desperately needed inspiration. Wanted to thank you for all the work that you do and I hope that you enjoy the book and a few extra prints. Take care, Raphael. Okay, Raphael, a couple of comments that I wanna make on your book. First of all, I absolutely love it and I wanna point out some things that I really love about it. And as I've been moving these into more of a critique kind of thing, I do want to critique a few things on here. First of all, I really like the use of color. I like the use of reflection that's in here here, and I love the fact that you've taken the approach as the city that you live in as your subject, and I think you've done a really good job of illustrating that. However, just a couple little tiny nitpicky things. When you're going to do black and white, get a proof copy of your book, because sometimes there's stuff that's important to the photograph that's in the shadows, and these do really get dark, and so it's a really good idea just to make sure your pictures are working. I think the color stuff in here looks fine, but sometimes on the black and white photos, it just kind of goes a little dark for my taste. The second thing I want to point out is I do love the variety of approaches that you have to your work. I think there's a lot of different angles, a lot of different perspectives. However, there's a couple spreads in here that I think are just unbelievable. This is one of my favorites. And I know it's a reflection photo that's been flipped upside down, but compositionally, there's a lot that's going on here. In fact, I kind of want to see this on a spread of its own. The second one that I really love that does work really well as a spread is this one with the pink flowers and how that kind of has a mirror to the cotton candy that this guy's carrying and the way that that just contrasts the yellows and the blues in these images. Those are really Really good. And the reason I want to point these out is because if I were going to pursue some more work like this, if I were you, I would go with both of those approaches. I think that you have a style that involves a lot of complexity at times, and I think it really, really works, and it stands out, and it's really interesting. So excellent job with the book. I think this is really well done, and just a couple thoughts of where I think you should probably take this direction in the future. So thanks for sending. Appreciate it. All right, next up, I have a small portfolio of images that I want to critique because they're really interesting because they relate to to a compositional video I did not too long ago, and this guy's clearly taken that to heart and done some things with it. So I wanna share this with you, but real quick, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace. Listen, you need a website, and we all know how much work that is to build and maintain, but it 
doesn't have to be. Squarespace is by far the easiest way to build your online presence. It's also the best way to grow a business that works for you without having to write a single line of code. Do you just need a simple portfolio or a blog to showcase your work? Well, Squarespace is perfect. Featuring a drag and drop interface, it's intuitive, it allows you to build galleries quickly and update your site with ease. Are you running a business? Well, Squarespace gives you additional tools for things like appointment scheduling, private member areas, social media tools, and even advanced email marketing. Do you sell products or services? Well, Squarespace has you covered with complete tools to power your store, from merchandising to checkout so that you can sell, ship, and build your customer base. You can even sell classes or manage appointments through your website. And with Squarespace extensions, you can easily sync with third parties to manage, optimize, and enhance your website. From social media integration to SEO, Squarespace gives you all the tools you need to grow a business that works for you. So head over to Squarespace and sign up for the free trial. Start with one of their award-winning templates and see what you can create and just how good you're gonna look. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com AOP and I can save you an additional 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just use the offer code AOP on checkout. So give it a try and see if Squarespace is right for you. And I wanna give a special shout out and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, so next we have a little portfolio of images that come to us from Gabriel Barnett, who lives in Melbourne, Australia. Also comes with a note and Gabriel writes, Hey Ted, first of all, sorry about my handwriting. I should have been a doctor and not an engineer. Engineer. First got into photography in 2012 when my art teacher showed me a documentary on the life and work of Don McCullen. I really think you should do a video on him. His work is amazing. Anyway, I found your channel a few years ago, but recently saw your video on exercises in composition, so I included some of the things from that. All of my stuff is black and white, never got on with color, but one of my favorite photographers is Saul Leiter. Saul actually inspired me to make a body of photos capturing the heart and soul of my city, Melbourne. I included an image from that as well. It's of a man at a protest. He looks very bored and uninterested and stationary. The other images are of my experimenting with lines in my photos. I especially like the one of the post in the ocean. The quality of the print isn't great, but you can see some HD ones on my website if you want. I'll list that in the show description below. If you don't make a video in which these are critiqued, would you be able to send me some criticism feedback in my Instagram, perhaps? Love your videos, inspire me to take pics. Gabriel. All right, Gabriel, since you asked me for a critique, I'm going to give you one, and I'm going to deal mainly with the exercise because I think this is actually interesting. It's something that I really didn't include more of from that video and probably should revisit it at some point. So if you haven't seen the video, I will link it up in this video, or you can click on the show description and find it there. Uh, But essentially, this was an exercise that I learned early on in my training uh, in terms of visual understanding of what we call figure ground relationships. So just to outline what that is, uh, Gabriel is using in his example the idea of these eyeglasses and the fork and the plate here. And sometimes he divides that up because these will be called figures. The ground is the space you're shooting on. And so he's actually introducing secondary grounds into here, uh, one that divides the composition in half. So one thing I wanna talk about is that I, I like what he's done with this. And as I mentioned in that video, what we're doing is we're playing with the idea of seeing the relationships of these objects as how they relate to one another and where they sit on the ground. There are certain things that I implied in that video, for instance, the closer you put things to the edge, the more tension they're going to be drawn. Uh, You're dealing with breaking up symmetry in some cases, and I think he's done that really well here. You see is when the figures, sorry, the ground is divided. So I think these are a really great start, and as to my exercise, I hope there's something you've learned from. And this is kind of where reviewing work is a little bit difficult because I would love to ask you some questions about that. But if you're gonna take this to the next level, and I realize this is an exercise, but what you end up with in the end are a bunch of kind of bird's eye view photographs. Now they're just sketches, they're studies, I totally understand that. So how do you take this up to the ne- next level? Hold on, I have something I wanna share with you actually. It's in the other room, hold on. All right, so this is a fairly well-known photograph. This is a photographier. this is Andre Kertesz. These are Mondrian's eyeglasses, and this is fairly well known, but you can see here that this is following the same description as I was talking about that, but we're seeing it at a 45 degree angle coming in, so it's not kind of bird's eye view. And so what we start to see here is a lot of the things that I talked about in that assignment, so to speak, but this has taken a step further because we've added dimensionality in it, we've also added tonality into it because it's lit, 
you do get subtle shadows. And it's important to pay attention to those things too because those shadows aren't super harsh. And the way the glasses are configured, we don't get secondary eyeglasses in the shadows. But this is where I would take this exercise for those of you who have done this and want to take it the next step moving forward. So the point is, is that we're moving into this territory of still life. And this is where it becomes really important to see what other artists have done, other people who are really masters in this idea and this genre of the still life. Now, I do think that Gabriel has some interesting ideas going on in these. I think it's time to take it to that next step. And when you explore these relationships and you see how they work, we're not really creating art just yet, but we've done the preliminary steps. Anyway, I think you've done an outstanding job on this. And Gabriel, I would actually love to see you take this a step further. Send them in and I'll share them with the others. So much appreciated. All right, next up is this book called Form and Function. This one is really cool. Uh, this comes to us from, this is a mouthful for me, Lino Giangiordano. Essentially what this is, is a portrait of a bridge. I'm gonna read you a little of the intro here. Radcliffe Bridge is a traffic bridge which carries Tonkin Highway across the Swan River between the Perth suburbs of Ascot and Bayswater. It is named after Redcliffe, which is a nearby suburb. Designed by Monsell and Partners and built by Theis Contractors, construction on the bridge started in 1986 and was officially opened on the 16th of April, 1988. The bridge is 271 meters long with five spans and a pre-stressed concrete deck 34 meters wide, supporting six lanes of traffic. Although the construction is predominantly of precast concrete bricks and pavers, the range of textures and how they showed themselves in sunlight and deep shadow made for interesting compositions, at least in my opinion. Okay, Lino, I love this. I think it is awesome. So what I love about this is that it's a very small book. It's not super long, it's not super complex, it's very digestible, and it's essentially a portrait of an object in this case, a bridge. This is something that everyone should do as an exercise, is just go find something, interpret it from a bunch of different angles, put it together as a body of work in a book and print one out. I think you're gonna see something that's very unusual. And I, what I love about this is because we see all these perspectives, like I don't see one image in here necessarily, except with the exception of the center spread that shows us the entire bridge. But what we get out of this is this idea of what's involved. And I absolutely love this. I think it's really cool. This is one of the things that's so powerful about photography is that we can come at different angles and different approaches and say different things. And those parts all equal the sum in the whole. Just a couple uh, things I wanna point out on here. I think the printing is pretty good. I do think that the contrast is a little funky sometimes. For instance, in this image where it's high contrast and it's geometrical, so we get the intent of the photograph. So it's, it's not the end of the world, but we do lose a lot in the highlights over here. So if you haven't checked out Ansel Adams and the Zone System, it might be worth a shot. The other thing that uh, is very offbeat about this is the layout. A lot of these images sit real hard over on the sides. I don't necessarily dislike that. It is very unconventional, but I think it probably adds actually to kind of the whole modernist aesthetic of this. It's very contemporary. And I think this is just really well done. And uh, one other thing I want to note for a lot of people is look at the way he plays with the scale and changes that up throughout the book. So you have a spread here with pretty pretty big borders around it. It works, it supplements the photograph, but then he changes that up by using less white space in the next spread, and he actually does go to full bleed on a couple, and then we have this big thing in the center. The other thing that's really nice is that a lot of times there's a technique uh, when you're actually putting a book together where we call this the gutter. It's the, where the spine of the book sits, and it's really important not to put photographs where you're gonna have information that's lost in the gutter, and I actually like the way that he's actually reserved that for just a few spreads in here. So, uh, Liano, really nice work, you should be proud. I love it. So once again, I will link up to all the photographers that I featured in this video in the show description, so make sure you check them out. If you have any questions about anything, drop them in the comments below. If you're enjoying these critiques so far, let me know, or my beard, or whatever else comes to mind. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.